from Doff Easy Studios in Eddieville, Kentucky. It's time for another episode of the Darf Easy TV Recap. Tonight, Captain Jack Harkness is back. The series finale of Arrow didn't live up to expectations, and I finally finished Star Trek Discovery. What did I think? Let's find out now. Your host, Darth Easy. Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Darth Easy TV Recap. Uh, so, this is uh, my weekly show, which I, you know, I watch a lot of TV. I watch, there's 10 episodes of TV to talk about this week. Well, a little more because of the show I'm streaming, and another show that I just started. But yeah, I watch a lot of TV. But, you know, I enjoy doing this podcast, so let's get right into it, and let's talk about some of uh, my shows I'm going to talk about. So first off, we have Doctor Who, Series 12, Episode 5, Fugitive of the Jadoon. Alright, uh, this was... I think the best Jodie Whittaker Doctor Who episode yet. And I think a lot of it has to do with the things that's going around. The episode basically is they go to this uh, town in Britain where the um, where I guess Hogwarts is. Uh, the castle they shot Hogwarts and Harry Potter. And it falls this, uh, this big black girl whose name is Ruth. And we really don't know why uh, we're following her character around. And then we see the Jadoon. The Jadoon were a uh, characters. I don't know if they were uh, pre assisted in Classic Who, but I remember mostly from the season three episode, the first episode of the Martha Jones Doctor uh, Who story, where she was a nurse and the her the hospital got transported to the moon, and the Jadoon were looking for a fugitive that was hiding a was hiding on the moon and was trying and they was trying to find it. So the Jadoon are they're going after this fugitive. Well, we find out that the the, uh, the doctor had got herself entangled to this character Roof, and Roof, we find out she's a Time Lord. She's not just a Time Lord; she's the Doctor. She has the TARDIS. You see the phone box and everything. She is the Doctor, but apparently she's a past self of the Doctor. So that was on its own mind blowing, and it was just crazy to see that. And I'm curious where they're going with that because I'm sure that storyline is not over for this season. Maybe maybe this gets concluded next season, but I, surely they'll have an, another episode dealing with this because that Roof character was the Roof Doctor Who was amazing. But then one of the funniest parts of the episode was all of the Doctor's companions was getting teleported onto a ship, and you hear the voice, and you're just like, that kind of sounds familiar, and you see him. Captain Jack Harkness. When I, Captain Jack Harkness shows up in this episode, I screamed. I am not kidding either. I went, woo! I was so pumped that Captain Jack was back because I love Captain Jack Harkness. If the Arrow finale wasn't this week, I would have put the Jack, Captain Jack Harkness theme as the music for this episode. Because I love Jack Harkness in Doctor Who. He show, Jack Harkness was a character who showed up in the first season of the revival of 2005 season with Christopher Eccleston's Doctor. He showed up there again during the David Tennant era of Doctor Who. So I love I loved seeing Jack, Captain Jack back. And his story was cool. Dealing with the Cyberman. That future storyline with the Cyberman. So oh, it's, it's cool to see the Cybermen are coming back. Oh, I like about this episode was you see the sadness and the confusion and then uh she tells uh like the like the time lord the f- is going after the doctor so it makes a question is this our doctor or is this a doctor from like what this is the doctor from an alternate reality or something so i really like this episode of doctor who and yeah this was a good episode of doctor who all right let's move on to batwoman season 1 episode 11 and unbirthday present so this episode at the end of the last episode we see a person that looks just like alice beth show up and what we find out in the episode is that this is a beth from another earth and basically she got kind of combined with the uh she got combined with earth Prime, with the earth prime beth with of uh, alice so there's two beths now this beth is a beth who is a care it's one who wasn't in the car didn't crash and she survived and she lived a good happy life and you you see the she you see the the closeness she has with her sister and then 
So th- that was kind of cool to see that. Like it kind of puts in like the little thing of regret. And we don't really we don't see Batwoman this episode. Really, we see Kate more. She gets captured by Mouse and his uh gang of misfits. And also you have Alice who is being interrogated by um the um the police girl. I don't know what her name is. Sorry. So I like this episode, and I like at the end where. <laughs> Both Beth and Alice are, they're going crazy. Like, they hear something in their head. And I also really like seeing Beth's past, I like seeing Alice's past. Like, when she was a kid and how she eventually becomes uh, Alice. Uh, I really like this episode. I thought this episode was pretty good. I mean, not bad, not a bad episode TV. Alright, let's move on to Black Lightning, Season 3, Episode 11. The, the Book of Markovia, Chapter 2, Lens addiction so this episode we see we see black lightning and the rest of the lightning family go after odell they're trying to stop they're trying to stop odell get him out basically they capture him and they odell basically at the end of the episode uh they're trying to they're trying to make a fake odell message to the rest of the of the organization to get out of freeland and to flee and i like this episode and we see Odell, he goes off. They say he's going uh, back to Gotham, so maybe, maybe this leads up, opens up for the Odell character to show up in a show like Black or in a Batwoman. That'd be kind of interesting. Keep this like you know universal thing going. Also, Link gets Tobias out, and but they get captured by the Markovians at the end, so that's going to be interesting. And also, Black Lightning and him, they capture Painkiller, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can. Re- bring his uh humanity back out so i really did enjoy this episode now let's talk about the theme episode of the week arrow season eight episode 10 fade out now it's sad that we live in a world where an arrow finale was better than the game of thrones finale because this arrow finale was everything you wanted and wished for and what often all, all good finale should be arrow it closed every door it closed every door you ever want it to close Thanks to uh, Oliver sacrificing himself, he kind of got to reshape the how uh, the the world was before that point, and like he changed some significant moments. Like one, Moria Queen, she didn't die; she lived. You have uh, Tommy; Tommy lived. She couldn't change some moments that would have changed his character. Like one moment, for instance, was he couldn't keep Robert Queen from dying because without Robert Queen sacrificing himself. Oliver Queen does not become the man he is who would save the 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 multiverse in the crisis. So I love that. I mean, there's some so many great little things. Like good, it's good to see the girl who plays Felicity come back for one more episode. And I like how Diggle. He's like he doesn't want to give up the mission. He doesn't want to give up the mission, but the mission's over. And the Green Lantern finale where uh, he opens up the box. That's gonna be interesting. They're moving. They're moving to Metropolis. Her and Li- him and Lila. So it would be interesting to see if Lila or Diggle show up in the Lois and Clark or the uh, Superman and Lois show. I'm, I'm, I Arrow f- and also Quentin's back to life. I love that. It's good seeing Lance back. This was a good finale. This was just a terrific finale to a show. Start. I mean, Arrow. Sh- the Arrow show was a show it had it up it had its downs but it brought us a lot of joy it brought us the flash show which i really enjoyed black light and supergirl i don't really like that show legends of tomorrow and some other shows that are probably in the works it's all thanks to arrow so i i loved i love the ending and i like this episode of arrow and i might go during the summer i might go back and rewatch the show and do kind of a retro retrospective of the entire series but Overall, this was a good finale, and yeah, this was a good episode of Arrow, guys. Alright, let's move on to Riverdale, Season 4, Episode 11, Chapter 68, Quiz Show. So this episode, we have Riverdale is competing against Stonewall Prep in the Quiz Show. Basically, we find out the reason why Betty didn't get into Yale was because of her dad. They didn't want the daughter of the Black Hood going to Yale, and that, that makes sense. So, you have that emotional moment with her and uh her dad's at the uh at the cemetery and as she's destroying the headstone that was a cool little moment um 
also we find out Jughead uh he they don't like his story for the for the uh for the book series. So he changes it up to a brown hood you know inspiration for the black hood kind of storyline so i that was so it kind of creates a little more friction between jughead and betty and uh that we're gonna see in a couple weeks with uh i guess jughead maybe dying maybe not dying so it's gonna be interesting to see all right let's move on also veronica it it's creating maple uh rum so cool let's move on to star trek picard season one episode two Maps and Legends. So this episode was not as good as the first episode. And that's fine. Because not every episode needs to be as good as the first episode. Because that pilot was good. But this episode we're just trying to get to the next course. Basically Picard is trying to uh, get a recommission as a Starfleet captain or Admiral. He's trying to, to go after the daughter, the second daughter of Data, trying to figure out everything. And I like, a lot of this has to go back to, like, that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation I watch, where the one guy, he was trying to recreate Data. And that was, I found that very interesting. And I really like Allison Peel in this show. I thought she does a good job. Um, also, I like the, I like the, the, the Android character, and I like the Romulan character and also the there's like the secret Romulan organization so because I, I thought those two characters that was taking care of Picard was was Vulcans but no I guess they're actually Romulan which makes a little more sense because they're not as you know logical as a typical as a typical Vulcan was so I thought this was a good episode I'm curious to see what's going to happen next because now uh, it looks like Picard's not going to be joining Starfleet. He's going to go rogue and do his own thing. So I'm looking forward to watching the next episode of Star Trek Picard. It's been a good show so far. Let's move on to Young Sheldon Season 3, Episode 13. Contracts, Rules, and a Little Bit of Pig Brains. This was a funny episode. George goes to uh, goes fishing with Dale, Georgie, and Dr. Sturgis. And, you know, Dr. Sturgis and, uh, Dr. Sturgis and Dale are arguing and everything, and Sturgis is catching more fish. Dale's calling Sturgis weird. And then it was also funny watching Sheldon and Missy compete against each other where they're like, well, if we, uh, we'll come with this extrinsic game and whoever wins gets to pick what we get to do tonight. All along, Sheldon's just trying to just try to distract Missy long enough so they won't have enough time to go outside and go do anything. And Shell says, I ultimately won. I was the winner because we we that we did what we I always want to do, never leave the house. And also there was a little kind of uh, hint at Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, where she uh they come up with rock paper scissors pony something hell pony lizard or something or it was something like that and she kept choosing pony and she's like how do you keep beating me and she's like you always go you always go pony rock beats pony that's just that, that that was a pretty funny moment because you know in the original big bang theory episode it was always they would always go everyone would always pick spock <laughs> and so yeah I, I like this episode of young show so let's move on to diary of a future president season one episode three disaster relief i like this episode this was a this is a charming sweet little episode of i like the show this is a sweet little show and basically the girl uh her best friend tells her that everyone has a niche and or uh, has a, something they're good at and like she says everyone but she said well, she said, well what's mine she said well yours is school but I was like, everyone's a school. He said, yeah, but yours is really school. So she says, I'll be the hurricane girl where I'll show people what hurricanes are all good for. And then eventually she goes up for election and you can't see uh, that that's actually her passion is going up for election. So that was a little cool moment. But she decides she's going to do the announcements. That was a cool little moment. So overall, I like this episode, uh, Diary of a Future President. All right, let's move on to uh, my I have two shows I've started streaming. I have one show which I'm completing and then another show which I just watched the first episode of. So let's talk about Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episodes 11 through 14. So the ep so the episode begins, uh, the, the episode where I left off of was her, Michael's mom shows up. 
And the episode begins with Michael, uh, mom, and she's, Michael's mom went back in time to try to save her, to try to save Michael and her dad from being attacked by Klingons and to keep them both alive. And I like this episode, and then also we see Katro has taken over Leland. So that, that that's a little cool moment. But then, really what I like about, so I'm on, now I'm just generally going to talk about the next, well, uh, let's talk about the next episode first. The next episode, well, Michael's mom gets sent to the future where she was off. And now she has no way of doing anything. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next season with her character. If they do anything with her character. One thing I liked about the next episode, though, was we find out we that the, uh, the son of Tyler and the Klingon girl had... had they were set. They settled their their kid off on a pl- on a monk planet of Klingons, and it was the planet that had all the time crystals. So basically, on this planet, time works a little differently there. You know, timey wimey, wibbly wobbly, timey stuff, as uh, the good old David Tennant Doctor would say. So it was c- cool seeing this because we have Pike. He he sees his future, and he's like a vegetable or something. And the Klingon offers him the crystal, he says, but if you take this, the future is always in motion. But if you take this, your future will be set in stone. So that was a cool little moment where Pike's like, I, I, I can't risk the future of, of life in the universe just because I don't want to have that future. I got to take that sacrifice. It just shows how good of a character Pike is. The final two episodes, they're trying to rebuild the Red Angel suit and go into the future and uh, save. Uh, now, at first, they were like, we got to destroy Discovery. That's the simplest solution. But the Discovery can't be destroyed because the data they got from the from one of the data core things won't allow itself to be destroyed. So it's up to, it's up to the troops to get the Discovery into the future where control could never be born to take that information into the future. So I love the episode. I thought I had everything great about it. And what good about this is now we're going to a timeline which we have never seen in Star Trek. And that goes us right into the finale of Star Trek Discovery. Where the Discovery crew and Michael, they go off into the future. And so we're going 950 years into the future of Star Trek, which I don't believe anything has ever gone that far. I think the latest timeline we have is about a hundred years after the events of, uh, which was you know in Star Trek Picard. I guess that's technically the latest timeline, unless Deep Space Nine and Voyager take place longer. But I don't think they do. So I'm curious to see what they do with this season, with this uh, story, in the next season of Star Trek Discovery. I really like this season. And I loved how they repaired and showed the relationship between Spock and and uh, Michael. I thought the relationship was beautiful. I thought at the end of it, it had just such beautiful moments. And Spock says, I'm going to be so lost without you. It's like, what am I going to do? And, my, and Michael will just tell Spock, go, go after someone who is the complete opposite of you. You know, just kind of hinting at Kirk. And I love the ending where you have to see Spock shaved. He's in the blue costume. And he's sitting as a science officer, Lieutenant Spock. I would love to see a Star Trek Discovery show set in the... In the uh, with the original crew of the Enterprise that we saw in the original pilot. I think that would be a cool little spinoff show too because i really like the guy who played captain pike i thought he did the character justice and i liked seeing the crew around him just i would love to see another season with just the enterprise crews after this before uh maybe we introduce uh kirk uh this way or something or maybe it'd be kind of i think it'd be a cool way to do the show so overall i really did enjoy the second season of star trek discovery I liked it a lot better than the first season because I thought the second season felt more Star Trek to me. The first season didn't feel like Star Trek. This season definitely felt like Star Trek. So yeah, I highly recommend watching Star Trek Discovery. And make sure you check out my full review of the season coming out tomorrow on my YouTube channel. And now let's talk about the first episode of The Chillin' Adventures of Sabrina, Season 3, Episode 1, The Hellbound Heat. So... This see, this episode basically Sabrina goes to hell to save her boyfriend Nick. But basically, when she gets there, uh, 
Tur- uh, Lilith does not want anything to do with her, but Lilith realizes she's got to have the daughter of Lucifer crown her as queen. It doesn't work out that way. She goes into the future. She goes into hell, and it- and it's just kind of chaos, and no one wants her there. But basically, she becomes kind of acting queen with Lilith kind of acting in her stead. So it's going to be curious to see what happens in the next episodes of Sabrina. So overall, I like this episode. Also, we see the ants of Sabrina to rebuilding the Church of Night. So overall, this was a decent episode, Chilling Sabrina, Adventures of Sabrina. This show is not bad. It's just, it's okay. So guys, that ends ep- another episode of the Darth Easy TV recap. Make sure you check me out here every week on the Darth Easy TV Talk podcast. Also, make sure you check out my uh, YouTube channel. I do movie reviews. I do TV reviews. I do other stuff. Um, also, subscribe to the Easy Cage podcast. Me and fellow YouTuber, Rainy Cage, go off and we talk about t- tons of topics in the movie sphere. Uh, this week, we are talking about February. We're talking about Best and Worst that came out last month. And we're talking about movies that you should go see this month. If there's any movies you should go see. So, guys, until next week. All too easy.